Welcome everyone. A little bit of spring magic. It is our Sunday gathering here, the 10th of April, 2022. We are so grateful you're here. My name is Sandra Champlain, also known as Hostess with the Mostess. And for all of you fabulous people who sent me such nice birthday wishes, I thank you. It was two days ago. I must have gotten a thousand beautiful greetings. So on the bottom of my heart, thank you. I want to introduce you to our cast of characters for today. Of course, every Sunday gathering, we want to put a smile on your face, unite the two worlds. Of course, those in the afterlife are always right with us, shining down and smiling with us. But we want to just share good words, positivity, put a smile on your face and get you started for the week. So today we have the beautiful Carrie McLeod, who's going to be doing our opening prayer, also our healing, and she will be demonstrating mediumship. We have Darren Wynn, who will be doing our reading, and he'll also be doing our closing prayer. Behind the scenes, we've got Phil Dykes, who is going to also be doing our medium demonstration. He's waving. You, you might not be able to see him. And also our words for the week. And then we have a special guest who's very special to us. It's Bobby Torres, who has not missed a Sunday gathering. 99.9 .9 of them. She's been here live with us. And there's been a couple that she's watched the replay, but she's been here for each and every one. She's a valuable part of our community. She participates in our online classes and she's just a wonderful friend. And I always get these cute messages from her. She knows I love spring and I love the little critters. And so I'll often get a little message or a picture of a birdie or a squirrel or a hummingbird or something. And I just knew today that this Sunday would be the magic of spring. And I just thought there's nobody better to just share from her heart than this beautiful soul. She's got a great personality and lots of love in her heart. So thank you, Bobby. So we're going to turn it over to Carrie for our opening prayer. Thank you very much, Sandra, and thank you for inviting me to do the opening prayer today. And welcome to Bobby and Darren and Phil in the background there. We are entering into spring in the Northern Hemisphere. And we know that down under you're heading into another one of Sandra's favourite seasons, the fall or autumn. But we're celebrating spring here. So as we open our Sunday gathering, can we enter into that silence within our own hearts of prayer? Divine and creative force of life. As we know the world revolves, that revolving around our sun brings us the seasons. It brings us that sense each time springtime comes within our world of the newness and that fresh view of life and that fresh view of where we can go. May us today allow that fresh view to come within our Sunday gathering. We know we're about to hear words within a reading and an address that allow us to reconnect with what spring is all about. But we know to each and every person watching this, spring holds a different place within their hearts, unique and yet special. Whether it be linked to people, plants, flowers, or indeed something else, allow it to bring that hope and that generating the love and the healing within ourselves. For spring really has sprung. Each day, regardless of the seasons, we are given a new start. God has given us another 24 hours, if we're really lucky, and now we get to spend them within the months of April, within that springtime. So let us celebrate spring. Let us know within our own hearts that spring is springing within us and allow us to truly move forward with that love, that understanding, that hope and cherishing that healing within our hearts. Amen. Thank you for that wonderful prayer, Kerry. And it has been a lovely spring day here today, but as you can tell, it's getting a bit darker now as we meet nightfall. But it's a pleasure to work on here with these guys, Kerry, Phil, Sandra and Bobby. Um, and I'm looking forward to doing a reading today. Today's reading is called Planting Day. When I was little, I often helped my mother plant our family's garden. As soon as the chilly winds of Chicago winter gave way to spring, 
Mum would be outside with a spade, seed packets, gardening gloves, and a secret smile that had been hibernating all winter. That smile never seemed to shine as bright as on those first few days in April, when she squatted in the mud with tiny seeds within her hands. I would pull on my grubbiest jeans, choose my shovel with care, and bound across the yard before mum could say, you forgot a jacket. I would kneel by her side for hours, carefully digging holes and cautiously pushing seeds into the earth with my chubby fingers. We would spend hour after hour repeating the process until the formerly snow smothered area barely knew what had hit it. Unfortunately, I grew up. Somehow I found better ways to spend the first days of spring and I threw my annual April morning job into the growing pile of childish outgrown activities. After all, I was too old to kneel in the dirt all day planting some silly seeds. I came to the conclusion that the shopping mall needed my assistance more than mum did. Surprisingly, my mother said much, never said much about my decision until two years ago. The spring I turned 14. I was on my way to a friend's house when mum stopped me. Would you please help me with the planting today, she asked. Oh, mum, I was just getting ready to leave, I pouted. I'll probably be gone most of the day. Well, you could possibly come home a little early and join me in the fresh air, mum asked. I mumbled something along the lines of, oh, maybe, I'll see. By the time I left the house, mum was already in the garden. She looked up for a moment as I walked past. And from the corner of my eye, I saw a certain pain and sadness in her gaze. At first, my heart told me I should stay to help. But as I got farther from home and closer to an exciting day of hanging out with friends, I forgot my impulse. A few hours later, as the sun started to fall from its place in the warm spring sky, I decided to leave my friends a bit early and head back home. Mum usually finishes planting seeds around six o'clock. I thought if I get back soon, I'll still have an hour or so to help her. I felt very noble for myself this decision. But when I reached home, there were mum's dirty boots by the door and a small pile of empty seed packets on top of the garbage can. I was too late. I didn't think much about that day until nearly a year later. One of my father's good friends suddenly lost his wife to cancer. The doctors hadn't discovered Sarah's illness until it was too late. She died shortly after di the diagnosis, leaving behind her husband and two small confused children. Right away, mum went south to visit the family and see how the children, David and Rachel, were coping with the sudden loss of their mother. She spent a few hours with little Rachel, and when she came home, she told me this story. When Zara had received her terminal diagnosis, she asked her husband, what should I leave our children? How do I give them something to remember me by? A symbol of my love for as long as they live. Mum learned the answer from Rachel. Mummy made me my own garden, Rachel cooed, as she tugged on Mum's hand and led her outdoors. Sarah had decided to plant her children something that would live on long after she was gone. Although the children had helped with the original planting, it was obvious that most of the work had been patiently completed by their mother. The result was a masterpiece, with so much more among the leaves and petals than simple foliage. A piece of Sarah's heart and soul was left in full bloom for her children. As I listened to my mother tearfully tell Sarah's story, I realised the true power of a garden. How had I missed it? Our annual planting was not about kneeling in dirt, throwing in some seeds and hoping for the best. It was about kneeling there together, planting potential life and creating the best memories possible out of the moments together. I was so lucky to have a healthy, vibrant, caring mother who was always there for me. As I suddenly realised how badly I missed seeing her soft hands play seeds in mine, many things became clear. I began to understand that the pain I had seen in her eyes that day a year ago had come from missing the little girl who was once at her side. A few weeks later, 
I came home to find several bags of seeds on the kitchen table. I knew spring planting was near. The following Sunday, I woke to rays of sunlight streaming through my window. I looked outside to see a figure stooping in the dirt. I threw on the first clothes I could find and ran outside. The first rays that encircled me were the ones streaming from my mother's smile. The first water our seeds encountered were the teardrops sliding happily from my eyes. We worked together all day and didn't stop until nightfall. I will never miss planting day again. So thank you for listening to me and I'll now hand you over to Kerry. Thank you very much, Darren. That reading is so powerful. Thanks, Darren. It just reminds us about the time spent with those and what is left afterwards. And we're going to enter into the healing moment and Sandra will play a song, but I want to share some words with you first about the difference that you can make in entering into the healing. Because for me, healing encompasses all those types of healing that you might have heard of, CKM, Reiki, Source Star, Crystal Healing, Sound and Colour Healing. It encompasses all that because it comes from that creative force of life. It might be delivered in different ways, but allowing it to be sent from that divine, that creative force of life through you is a gift you can give to anybody, whether it be an individual or a community or indeed a country. When we think about the human body being 60% water, and we know that water can transmit whatever it's put in, whatever is put into it, so we know that it vibrates beautifully to classical music and it kind of becomes choppy if it has very loud, aggressive music played to it. Then if we're that level of water, what we should be aware of is what words we say to ourselves, what actions we do and the thoughts that we have. The same as this, this for other people that we send healing to. If we send thoughts to other people who are in desperate need of healing, but those thoughts consist of our perception of the pain they might be in, or our understanding of the illness they might have, or our perception about the world that they live in, what we're sending them is thoughts that might affect them in a negative way, even though it's well-meaning. If we send thoughts of happiness and joy, if we send thoughts and picture in our mind that person being healthy, being hearty, being back to the health that we once knew them at, I have a sense that that, that might have a stronger power to it. And it might well help the physical body. Because if we look at it, the physical body is the temporary home of our spirit is a temporary home within which the soul grows. Now, the person you're sending healing to doesn't necessarily need to know that you're sending them healing. If you're sending healing, it's always better to get permission from them. If you're going to sit regularly at the same day and you've got a healing list. But during our moments of silence, or for instance, during the song, a whole group of us are going to get together and send positive thoughts, are going to send healing thoughts, are going to send thoughts that come from a divine source through you to another person. If we all get together within this moment, we can make incredible differences because we're coming together under that umbrella of healing. So please never think that you're just one person and cannot make a difference. Just imagine in seven and a half billion people on the planet, if a couple of thousand people happen to be sending all at the same time, imagine what the spirit world can do with that healing thought. And if you sit for three minutes, which we're about to sit for around about that time, imagine what difference we can make. We can make an incredible difference. So whether you're here live with us or whether you're watching the recording, every drop of healing you send gets sent 
to all the other healing thoughts that's out there in our world get brought together and can have a powerful outcome. Don't question, don't doubt, and don't try. Just allow yourself to move into a space where you are increased in size, increased in power. And we're going to use the power of the breath because in that breath increases ourselves. So I'm going to walk you just for about 30 seconds before the music starts into a space where you can feel most able to be in that healing power. So if it's safe to do so, and you're not doing something that you need your eyes open, then close your eyes and enter into a silence and follow my words. On each in-breath, Allow that invisible part of you, that part of you that isn't the physical body, to expand. And on the out breath, do the same. And on the in breath, expand even further. And again, expand on the out breath. This part of you that's expanding is the part of you that becomes the healer. This part of you is housed within the physical body but we get a sense of it when we activate this part of us. When we sense this part, that's why it's called becoming sensitive. So in that expansion place, I'm gonna get you to imagine that there is healing moving through you as if you were a channel for that healing. Don't direct it at the moment, just allow it to flow through you. Get used to that healing sense. Anybody can be within that healing power. And the magic is some of it stays with us. Droplets of that power of healing stay within us. Now, allow yourself to set the intention of sending to a person, a group of people, a town, a city, or indeed a country. And as the music starts, Allow yourself to let that feeling of the healing move through you towards that person or group of people you have in mind. Ladies and gentlemen, I'd like to introduce you to our friend, Bobby. Over to you, Bobby. Excuse me. First, I'd like to thank Darren for touching the hearts of every single mother that's listening. And I'd like to thank Carrie for her beautiful words and descriptions. She deeply touches my heart many, many times. I'm so blessed to be with you all today. When Sandra told me that the theme was the magic of spring, I felt so happy because it's one of my favorite seasons. Winter is finally over. And all of a sudden my world is alive with colors and fragrances and love is in the air. According to my boys, I would be remiss if I were to omit, I quote, that spring is not crocuses or swallows returning to Capistrano, but the sound of the bat on the ball. <laughs> this year I've been thinking about how we are finally coming out of the threat of the pandemic. I think it's a good correlation to the ending of winter. I often saw myself living in a fog over the last two years, and I am so excited for this spring because for me, it always heralds new beginnings. Think about it. First, we're coming out of winter, the time of seeds lying still within the ground in germination, and a deeply internal time of beingness rather than one of doing. And then boom, spring represents the dawning and illumination of morning light. And thus our awakenings and our awareness. Spring is represented by the East and the East is symbolized by the golden eagle who is said to fly into the dawning to pick up the light of the sun and carry it across the land for enlightenment for all. One of my favorite things about the spring is the knowing. There are pieces of my life that hold that knowing. 
I know when spring comes, the flowers will return and the warmth begins. It's not something I believe will happen. I know it. Just like I know that life is eternal. That, that's another theme of spring. I don't believe it will happen. I know it. Knowing comes to each of us in different ways. I think that one of the ways to strengthen that absolute is to pay attention to the messages that are given to us each and every day. If we were truly observers, we probably could document at least five messages every day. I'd love to give you an example of a message I did not listen to. One morning I was up in my bedroom on the second floor of my house and I was straightening up before going downstairs. You know the little chores you do. You make the bed, you take your vitamins, you see what's on the agenda for the day. As I was making my bed, my attention was drawn to my purse, which was on the floor by the door. I ignored it. It was just a thought. I brushed my teeth. I came back to my room again, and then I was drawn to the purse. I ignored it. Now in my house, there are a lot of stairs. Before I go downstairs, I put together in a bag things that I think I might need for the day so my step travels could be limited. If you've ever lived with stairs and you're over 65, you'll know what I mean. I gathered my bag together and a few things and I headed down to, share, to start my day. I passed the purse once more and momentarily it caught my attention, but I ignored it and went down to the kitchen. After a few more morning chores, the phone rang. It was a call from my doctor's office needing some insurance information. Where do you think the information was? Upstairs on the floor in my purse. <laughs> well, I know this is not a big deal, but something was trying to help me cut my steps. I call it my knowing, but I didn't listen. If we make that conscious attempt to listen to what we are shown, we are listening to the inner knowing of our soul whether it comes as a message about a purse or a life. It's a message to build our confidence and faith, a message to make life easier. It is my wish this spring, as you awaken to the light and all the joys of the season, for you to listen to the messages that come, to begin to embrace your knowing. Those messages can change your life. Thank you for allowing me to speak today. The Sunday gathering has been a favorite of mine since its beginning. This family embraces me as their own, and their caring and commitment is a priceless gift. Enjoy these beautiful spring days to come. And don't forget to pay attention to your purse. You know what I mean. I leave you with a poem from Will Ash Bacon. It says to me that this is what can happen when we allow new beginnings to blossom, just as the blossoms of spring wake us from our winter slumber. May we each bring peace. It's up to us to re-enchant this planet Earth. We are the elves and giants. We are the shining ones, daughters of the moon and sons of the sun. We are the shapeshifters. We are the mysterious light shrouded in mists at the dawn of our time. And it's up to us to re-enchant this living planet Earth. Up to us to midwife at our own rebirth. Up to us to send our dead along their ancient pathways to the future, up to us to re-enchant this living planet Earth. It's up to us to break the spell that steals the colors from the world and leaves it lifeless. It was our spell. We can break it. It's up to us to break the spell that steals the music from the wind <clears throat> 
and rain. It is our spell. We can break it. We will dance the magic dance and our bodies will remember how to live together, how to love each other, how to ride the eagle, how to call the deer home. I say namaste to you all. The God in me recognizes the God in you. Thank you and please pray for peace. Thank you so much, Bobby. Everybody else filled with love in your hearts. I know I sure am. Oh, you're beautiful. And you are shining just like those daffodils behind you that you plucked from your yard. Thank you for being with us today. It's so nice to have our guests that are part of our community. So, oh, give us a shout out sometimes, you guys. We know you're here. We see your names listed. Uh, we've got a great Facebook group. Introduce yourself. You know, we know many of you, but we don't know all. So we're grateful you're here. We're going to move into our demonstration of mediumship now. And, you know, I'm thinking of the magic of spring and, you know, all the little critters I have out here at the bird feeders. It's like Christmas morning every morning. I don't know what we're going to find. And the, the little yellow finches are turning bright yellow. And I know when we have our Sunday gathering and our friends from the spirit world join us and work through our mediums, it's also like Christmas morning. It's filled with just magic and love. And they let us know that they're still here. They haven't left. Sure, there's jobs to do and, you know, education for the soul and all that good stuff when we transition to the other side. But they're just a breath away. And they're with us so much of the time with their love. So we absolutely love having our mediumship as part of our Sunday gathering. So if you're here for the first time, I'll tell you how it goes. If you've been here before, well, you get to hear it just one more time. Carrie and Phil are our mediums. They're longtime mediums. They are tutors. They teach our classes on psychic and mediumship and spiritual assessment this, this month, special course. And they're just great people. And they have a real commitment, not only to us in our gathering to let you know that our loved ones are still around, but they have a real commitment to the people in the spirit world. They are still people. We're not balls of energy floating around. They're still people and their voice matters and their messages matter. That's why they teach so much that they want to make sure their students of mediumship really represent them authentically their words, not the person's imagination, that the real feelings get come through. So I'm so proud and delighted that they're my friends and that they are here with us on our Sunday gathering and, and teach the classes. So in the moment, you're going to hear one of them give some information about a spirit person that has kind of knocked on their door. The spirit world has this handled as much as we like to put in requests. The spirit world is behind all of this. And um, I'm sure they're lined up in a certain order to come through and they'll put their thoughts and feelings and words and images and who knows what into Carrie and Phil. They'll do the very best job they can to represent them. So you'll hear them say a few brief things about the spirit person that has connected with them. Maybe uh, as a mom or dad, who they are perhaps, or you know, the relationship, maybe what they did for the living or some different things about them. We want you to really listen in clearly. And if you can understand absolutely every word that they just said, like I know that person or somebody that no longer walks this earth, but there was somebody in your life. Now they could be a friend. It could be a family member. Sometimes it's a little bit of a, a distant connection, but if you can understand everything about what they just said about the person, we want you to press your raise hand button. And for everybody who likes to press buttons right now, if you want to find that raise hand button and just press it, go ahead and do so. I know it's in different places on different devices. And this is a place that my screen lights up with all these hands going up. So now it should say lower hand. So what you want to do is press it again and the hand will go down. Sometimes it takes a couple of minutes to distinguish who the spirit person is here to talk with. So we're always patient. And when the time comes that we say, oh, there's one person left here. This is who the message is for. I have a special button on my side. And then you'll get a little message that says the host would like you to unmute or something like that. So you'll press your unmute button. And then you'll have an opportunity to talk with Carrie or Phil. 
And when I say talk with them, we just want one of three responses. We want them to do the work. We want everyone to know that the spirit person is with them, that they're delivering this information. So as they present information, all you need to do is say yes, no, or I don't know. There may be some information that doesn't resonate with you. So a no is okay. They teach in their classes. No just means new opportunity. Look within, get some information. So with that, we always play a song before our demonstration. For me, I like sitting back and just seeing my dad, my grandmother, and some other loved ones with me. And whether the people have passed to the other world or they are still around in this world, why not imagine them in your room right now, dancing, singing along, having a good old time with our spring magic. Okay, so we're going to come right back after we play this song. Here we go. Welcome back, everyone. Hello, Carrie. <laughs> Hello, Sandra. What a beautiful version of that song. It is a springtime and summertime picture in there with water and ice lollies. I don't know what you call them in the States, but here we call them ice lollies. Um, beautiful and a fantastic choice of music. And Bobby, thank you for that address. Really lovely to hear all those words put together. And it's said with such honesty and truth as well. So we know it's come from your heart. So thank you very much for sharing that with us. So as I'm working with the spirit world here, I felt mum, as we were listening to that song, Waterloo, I felt mum come in, but I also felt that mum would have passed with a cancerous condition. But I know that there would be memories just as mum had her illness. And it was prompted by that video, Sandra, of being in the garden in a summertime and there being grandchildren and you and your mum outside, but I need it to be just before your mum um, passes or before she got incredibly unwell. Somebody would have this memory. Thank you, Carrie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, if you can recognize that information, go ahead and press your raise hand button. All right, we have Ilsa with her hand up. Ilsa, would you press your unmute button, please? Hello. Hello. Welcome. Hi, Ilsa. Hi. So you have this very clear memory of being in the garden with your mum and her grandchildren while she was ill, but before she passed. Yes. And you would have memories of your mum being ill at this time. Yes. Because I had the sense from your mum that there was an incredible strength within your mum, an incredible strength of her wanting to protect the rest of the family. But I also know your mum must have taken an, an incredible interest in her garden. Yes, absolutely. Because I know your mum would have had um, her lawn cut a certain way. She would have been very particular about how I know Phil does his lawn. <laughs> you do it in different directions and it does lovely patterns, but I know your mum would have done this as well. Yes. And I want to say as well, you'd have memories of there being a sprinkler system in the garden. What's that? Uh, I have to throw where, where the little um, water, it waters the garden in the hot days. I can't remember that, sorry, no. Okay. She did it herself. Then, she did it herself. Okay. Thank you for giving me that. But I know that there is this. I actually got the, the, the picture of the sprinkler, but if your mum watered her garden herself, then there must have been memories of during that time in the garden with your mum, with there being a hose being um sprayed yes. about. Because I know yes. your mum um shows me her being caught in yes, the sprinkle yes. of water from the hose if it's not from a sprinkler system yes, i also my daughter's helping me yes okay where your mum lived else is it else ilsa ilsa where your mum lived um would you understand that after she passed there would have been some time before your mum's house was sorted out and taken care of and you went through some things. Yeah, yes. Because I get this 
feeling that your mum's garden got a little bit overgrown. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. <laughs> and as it got overgrown, you must have begun to see um, the amount of work that your mum put into her garden. Absolutely. And in the back garden, would you recall there being a large white rose bush? Yes. And that white rose bush must have grown up and across either a shed or a hut. Yes. Because I know your mum, um, in her humorous way, is, is giving the... Because <laughs> it became a bit wild. <laughs> I know that wild roses do grow wild. But I know this white rose must have grown up there. But you would also understand the name Rose or Rosemary. Um, oh dear, no, sorry. Okay, that's okay. Then you would understand your mum's home being called Rose Cottage, or she joked about it being Rose Cottage or Rose House. No, I'm sorry, no. Okay, that's okay. That's I know what your mum's given me. Then when you were younger, would you have memories of being out in this back garden? The house where I grew up. Yes. The roses. Yes. Under the. Okay. I then do, I do don't don't else. give me any more. Let let me work for you. Then where you grew up, you must have had this little gang hut or um, hideaway that was underneath the rose bushes or under or by yes. the rose bushes. Because yes. I know your mum's um, letting you know that she remembers. Yes. She's calling it Rose Cottage, like your little rose house or the house underneath the roses. I also know that your mum must have frequently had your friends to the house when you were younger. What's that? Um, oh, yeah, yeah, yes, yes, yes. Because I know your mum would have wanted to make everybody feel welcome. Yeah, absolutely. And I know there was something very particular that your mum did that your friend remembered her for, a particular thing she cooked or a particular way she made her sandwiches or her meals that your friends talked about. Yes, yes. Because I know she wants to bring those memories of summer, of friends and of having the this time together. And I know we've all... Bobby um, adequately shared how we're coming out of this time of pandemic, but I know you must be making plans for getting out and meeting up with people. Yeah, yeah. And I know your mum wants you to remember um, those times that you and her shared and how she must have sworn you to secrecy about part of her illness in those days before she passed. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because there's a sincere thanks from your mum about it's good that nobody knew the full effect. Yeah, yeah. It's better that way. And she's ever so grateful for you. Please know this is your mum's way of bringing those memories to you. And thank you for allowing me to do that for you. Thank you very much. You're very welcome. Thank you, Ilsa. Thank you, Carrie. Okay, I do believe I have father and grandfather in the spirit world. And I know that grandfather would have been in the armed forces and I do feel it as the army or land um, based military. But I know that dad must have spent time in the military as well. And I do feel that he would have been in the air force but also would have spent time in land-based military as well. And I know he would have served his country. All right, thank you very much. All right, ladies and gentlemen, who can recognize this information? All right, we've got Chris. Chris, could you press your unmute button? Chris. Hello. Hi, Chris. Hi. Hi. Welcome. Hi. Hi, Chris. You understand everything I've said? Yes. You said uh, grandfather was in the army and father was in the Air Force. 
Yes, but would you understand that your your dad would have also um, been on the ground in some um, military action as well? Well, he before he was in the Air Force, he was in the Army Corps of Engineers. Okay, that that makes sense because I know I'm also in in ground based um military as well and i know your dad wouldn't have been one for much conversation about what he did um in his work uh not so much i guess um because i know that he wanted to keep um not to say he didn't talk about it but he wouldn't come back with graphic detail about what happened no you don't understand that no, I'm sorry, you're correct. No, he okay. wouldn't. He, um, I was. Mm -hmm. But would you also understand that your dad in the Air Force must have had some skill in that area? Absolutely. Because I, I get the sense from your dad that he was quite proud of the things he could make a plane do. Yes, he was a pilot. And you also know that he would have got into trouble sometimes being the pile of the planes, making planes do things that they might not ordinarily do. Yes. <laughs> and I yeah. know he would, you would know his nickname in the Air Force, but I also know that he would have, um, your dad would have served in, um, okay. I know your dad would have been in the Air Force, but he, he would have had times that he could not share what he was doing and where he was going before he went. That's probably true. I, you know, he retired when I was about six years old. And so okay. then there must would, have been yeah. there must have been an understanding of your dad doing um, flights that nobody knew what the real purpose was for. I feel like he did did things that were of a secret nature very possibly like i said oh, okay. he, he was he was a career pilot and so you know okay. he was 20 plus years and in and so okay. but, but in that time then i do know your dad is of this opinion that he was well thought of well respected and he got um a commendation as well several yes okay because i the commendation I know he's wanting to boast about is the things that he got up to that he shouldn't have in a plane, not the things that he did that follow <laughs> the rules. And I know that's your dad's character. I know your dad's character is about making the most of life, about living life to the full. And I know your dad must have flown planes after he retired from the Air Force. He must have flown small planes for fun. Yes. He did. And I know he would have, um, you, you would understand your dad taking other people out in these small planes as well. Yes, he did. He, I went with my dad quite frequently. Oh, oh don't give me any more because I can't give you that as evidence. Sorry. Um, because I was about to say, I know he took you out in these planes, but I also know that he must have done, made the trick, the, the planes do tricks and, and do um, things that, he wanted to really test your resilience and show off his skill. Yes. <laughs> you, you must have memories as well of going to um, air shows with him where he would talk to you about the different types of airplanes. Sometimes. And you would know at one of those air shows that you would have got um, really engrossed in one of the planes or an area and have momentarily become lost. Uh, not to my recollection, but I was fascinated with planes. Okay. Yes. Could I, Chris, would you understand your mum in the spirit world as well? Yes. Because I, I get the sense from mum that she's giving dad a, a telling off for losing you at one of those, because he was looking here and so engrossed <laughs> in the planes and you were looking here and mum saying, where is she? What have you done with her? <laughs> um, but I want to say as well, I know that with mum here, I know that mum was very proud and supported your dad to an incredible level. Absolutely. And I know there is, your, but your mum must have had a great 
understanding and knowledge of the military as well? Through him, yes. Okay. Would you understand that your mum also volunteered or supported the wives within the bases or within the accommodation? I believe so. Again, uh, I was my sister's Okay. Trap. You yeah. don't know that for sure. I don't know okay. for sure. Thank you. Okay. I know I've got the sense within your mum that your mum always wanted to look after your dad and make sure your dad was okay. Absolutely. Yes. And I know your mum had this natural way of making your dad feel very special and also making you feel very special as well. Yes, 100%. And I know there would be memories. I know with my previous um, recipient and, and contact, I spoke about there being this little secret place. But would you remember your mum and you sitting down under the covers reading the book or your mum reading a book to you? Yes. Because it's a special moment your mum's wanting to bring in. And I know that the right now you would be... Um, a birthday within the family but I know would I be right in saying your mum's birthday is very close um yes her birthday's in May mine's coming up in a few days oh, okay um I know would have then got me to um your birthday but I know with this I have to say that your mum never fell short of making you feel very very special that is 100% true. And I want to say that your mum must have passed just before or just after your birthday, Chris. Yes, yes. Because I know that your mum wants to make every birthday since she's passed extra special. And it's very important that you know that your mum is here for you now for your birthday. I know you've got three bottles of wine as your picture here. <laughs> yeah. But I know she's bringing up the candles. So no, there must be a special birthday for you coming up. No, not okay. really. Then don't be surprised, not prophesizing or, or predicting. But I know your mum is wanting to highlight that when you see the candles, all those wine <laughs> bottles here, I know the candles is what she wants to highlight for you and to say happy birthday. She had a special thing she always did in your birthday just for you though. Thank you, yes. Because I, I know there's a little special thing that she's doing that nobody else gets to know about. Please know she still does that for you on your birthday. Okay. Thank you very much, Chris, for allowing me to do that for you. Thank you very much. Happy birthday Thank when it comes. Thank you. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Carrie. Okay, I do believe I have sister with me. And I do believe that sister. Um, okay. I do believe that sister would have had um, a very short illness. But I know that it. it okay. I know there's a diagnosis here and then a very short illness before she passes. I also know that it, who I'm looking for would have gone to her appointments with her. And I know that there would have been a discussion between sister and the person I'm looking for about how soon do we tell the family? What do we tell the family and where do we tell the family? Thank you very much, Carrie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, who understands this information from this lovely lady? We have Donna. Let me. Donna, could you unmute yourself, please? Hi, Donna. Thank you. Thank you. Hi, Donna. You understand everything I've said about sister? Yes. And you understand that not only would you and your sister have decided what to tell, who to tell, and how much to tell. But you would have also made a pledge to her to look after people when your sister had gone. Yes. 
then with your 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 sister's children there must be um okay there your sister must have made boxes up with things in there for her children no And she didn't leave anything behind for when the children grew up for them to open or read? Uh, no. Okay. Hang on a second. There's a chance that I, I've used it incorrectly, but I've got this feeling that this would make sense to somebody else, Sandra. Bear with me a second, Donna Marie. Thank you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, does anyone else understand this information? If yes, raise your hand, press your raise hand button. I know I have sister. I know there is a discussion before she passes about who you're going to tell, what you're going to tell and how much. But I also get a feeling that sister must have put together um, a box of things to be opened after she passed. No other hands being Nobody raised. Nobody understands Sorry. that. Then, Donna Marie, would you, would you understand that you have a box of your sister's things? No. Mm -hmm. I understand what you mean, though, but no. Right. Just, just let me work with it for a second, and just to check that I'm with you. Then... You know where some of your sister's belongings and jewellery and um, cards and letters are kept in a box together? Yes. Okay. And you would have looked at this recently? You're going to say no to that. That's recently. Okay. No. Okay. Then after she passed, there must have been some confusion over how and what was to happen with some of your sister's things. Yes. Okay, okay. Sorry about that bit of misunderstanding there, but I know what your sister wants to share is about um, you did everything you could to get them to where they needed to be. I understand that. I also want to say that you had to, um, I know your sister's acknowledging how you had to step back and bite your tongue about yes. some of the things that were happening after your sister passed. Yes. I want to say, too, that you and your sister must have had memories of going um, to a pantomime or, or a live show just before she became ill. I don't remember that. And you don't have memories of going to a pantomime with your sister when you were both younger? I can't remember that. Really? Then... Donna Marie, would you understand that since your daughter's passing, your, your sister's passing, you have taken her children to see live shows or musicals? Um, not at this stage. There's, I'm not quite understanding this. I know that there is a sense with your sister that she loves the musicals and she loves time with her children, but there must have been instructions left that things were to carry on as they were before in terms of the kids yeah. doing certain things at certain times and not stopping. Would you understand that your sister passed around about the Christmas time, Donna Marie? No, she didn't pass at Christmas. Okay. Then. Can I something ask you to... did. something else? Did. OK, then I know your sister is referring to the Christmas time. I know she's referring to pantomimes and I know she's referring um, to watching or seeing these pantomimes because I know that there is this love. It's actually Jack and the Beanstalk. So have a check in with them and see whether this makes sense to them. And, I understand and that they... round the you understand that, okay. And I know that this this is your sister's way of eternally being grateful for what you have done for 
being strong when you actually wanted to have enough and walk away. But actually, look, you must have looked after your sister as well when she became ill. Yes. Because I know there's this sense of her of you haven't even told the family some of the things you had to do for her. And I know That's she right. thank, and I know she's thankful for that. But I know your sister has a really quirky sense of humor because I know she wants to crack a joke um, about some of the clothes that she had to wear and some of the accidents that happened and some of the things that you had to do. She's wanting to make jokes out of them, not to make light of them, but to create that sense of saying thank you without having to be embarrassed about it. Yes. Yes. So thank you very much for allowing me to do that you for you, Donna Marie. I know that there is um, a great appreciation. Whatever you did before Christmas last year, Donna Marie, I know your sister is grateful. Yes, I understand. Okay. I, I absolutely know that within her heart. Thank you for allowing me to do that for you, Donna Marie. Um, and I'm going to say thank you to everybody for allowing thank me you. to work for the spirit world. It's going to be my pleasure now to pass over and invite Phil to work. Thank you very much, Carrie. Always a delight. And to our friends in the spirit world as well. As we can see, they may be physically gone, but they're still around and they still have their personalities. Hi, Phil. Hello, Sandra. Hello, Bobby. Hello, everyone. And hello, Darren. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure. I've sat there with a smile on my face thinking, you know what? It's so wonderful to listen to people's contact. None of those were mine, but it's just like, you know, it's so touching. So I, absolutely. I'm just still in awe of the spirit world and what they do and how they make us feel to hear people's voices. So it's absolutely brilliant. And I'm going to say a personal thank you to Bobby. Uh, wonderful address that just so inspiring. But I will tell you off because of things I was going to say in the words of the week you mentioned. So but there we go. Fantastic. <laughs> absolutely brilliant. So I'm going to do the same or try to do the same as what Kerry's done. Um, and, and I know here, uh, as I become aware of the spirit world, I want to talk about dad. Now, I know dad was a soldier and I know it was the land army um, and I know with dad um, I, I want to say he was almost like the mascot himself because I know he was just full of life because there seems to be this sense of wanting to uh, be on the photographs wanting to be just entertaining colleagues and people as well so I know I have dad I know he was a soldier but I know he's just full of life as he comes forward here thank you Phil who understands this a lovely man Press your raise hand button. No one is putting their hand up just That's yet. That's absolutely fine because I may have got the relationship wrong. So I'm just going to hold that for a second. But I know I have this gentleman. I do believe he was a father. I could be wrong. He could have children, though. But I just feel here that he was in the army and I know or, or the military. And I know here he was just full of life. And I know there should be a photograph of him um, in the uniform. But I feel I'm overseas and I'm either holding a flag um, because I know it's just the way that I, I want to remember him as well because I keep on getting this distinct impression that I'm overseas and where it's hot. Thank you, Phil. All right, ladies and gentlemen, who recognizes this gentleman? Patricia has her hand up. Let's bring her in. Patricia, could you press your unmute button, please? Hi, Hello. Patricia. Hi. Welcome. Hello, Patricia. How are you doing? Just fine. Good, good, good. And you understand the things that I've said? Yes, I do. And because I just understand, because I felt it was father, but you don't understand it as father. I do. Oh, you do? Because that, I, I didn't really want to change that because it did feel. Would you understand with your father, though? He was a character. He was full of life. Yes. And if I said with your father as well, um, that he just had this way of interacting with people, making people feel quite at ease. Yes. Because it's just this impression that I have. But I want to say he was full of life as well. 
Yes. Because and, and where he served in the army, there must be photographs with his colleagues and his brothers of arms. Yes. And, and I want to say these photographs, though, some of the photographs were, and forgive my language, were either taken when he was off duty. So it's almost in that downtime as well. Um, yes. And, and with your dad, what I'd be right in saying, he, he is quite a character. He, he was a bit of a, what I want to say, a cool dude. He was. Because, I, again, and but I, would I be right saying, Patricia, as well, that he was your rock? He was that big support for you? Yes, he was. Because I also know with him, there's just this sense of wanting to come in and pick you up. And I know this is what he would do. He'd always make a fuss of you. Um, yes or no? <laughs> Bear with me. Let me put it a different way. Would I be right in saying where either he came back off tour or duty, he would always come and pick you up? No. He wouldn't. Then bear with me. Would I be right in saying that there's part of his personality, the way that he is, because I can't change this, it's almost like he would lift people's spirits? Yes. Yeah. Because I know there's just this feeling of wanting to, because I feel like I'm being picked up, and I know there's just this, this sense of him just doing this with people. But I want to say as well, he was always smiling. He was always positive. Yes. And what I'd be right in saying that the way that he was, he had this positive effect on everyone. Yes. And... What I'd be writing saying that he, he was quite a confident man. Um. When I say confident, he's just the, he, the way that he would hold himself, the way that he would present himself. He was. Because I know there's just this sense here. But also with your father, um, what I'd be writing saying that he even though he could be this way, he was very careful with his words. <laughs> um, sometimes. <laughs> because, but, and if I said he was very poignant, he knew when to say things at a certain time, but he could get people's attention. He definitely could. Because I know he would put the odd politically incorrect word in there. Do you understand? Every day, yes. That's fine, because I know here some of these words I'm hearing, I'm thinking, okay, I can't say those. So I know they were unpolitically correct, but I know it's just his way. And I don't want to say he was being derogatory. He just spoke the truth and said it how it was. Yes. And that's how he wants people to remember him. And this is the way that he seemed to inspire people. It's just the way he was the same with absolutely everybody. Yes. And I know with this, he comes in to lift you, inspire you, and also just crack that whip with a few choice words and just says, pick yourself up and we keep on going, Patricia. Correct. And I'm going to leave his love with you and say thank you very much for allowing me to do that and allow Dad just to come in to be himself. Thank you. You're absolutely welcome. Absolutely welcome. Thank you, Patricia. Thank you, Phil. And thank you to your dad. Okay. Hmm. I've just got an image, Sandra, and I'm a little bit taken aback because um, I recognise this person. I've seen them, and I'm just questioning how to deliver this. Um, okay. I'm going to go with this. Um, what be, I, I, I do feel I want to speak to somebody in the United Kingdom, and I do believe they would have met a lady that used to be on the TV. Um, and I, I want to say it's like a chance happening, a meeting or a signing. Um, and I do feel that the lady was off Coronation Street as well. I do believe the lady I have is an actress. Thank you, Phil. All right. Who recognises this information? No hands up. Mm. 
Yeah, I know what I saw, and I know that it, 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 there's no way of me denying this because I have actually met this lady as well. Um, and I'm just wondering if I need to use this in a slightly different way. So I'm just going to stay with the how the image has been presented to me, but there's some of the information I can't change. I know that I want to speak to a, a lady. I know that she would have met either a celebrity off the TV. Um, and I'm even though I'm seeing one of the English celebrities, I'm going to just hold that for a second. But I know somebody would have met a, a celebrity. And I know it's a female celebrity. And I feel it was off either a sitcom or a soap TV soap episode or, or series. All right, who can recognize this information? Meeting a woman off the TV. Nobody? Mm. Hmm. No, I'm, I'm really, because I'm going to re-look at this, because I've got to stay with the evidence I've got. Um, Oh, I might have just interpreted it wrong. Right, bear with me. I want to talk about somebody's mum in the spirit world. I'm going to look at this in a different way. I want to talk about somebody's mum in the spirit world, and she would have looked like an actress off the TV. And I want to say she even styled herself. People mentioned this as well. All right. Who can understand this information? Don't be afraid to raise your hand. Somebody's not coming forward, somebody's not speaking up because I know what I'm seeing because I've still got the same image in the spirit world of giving it me here. Um, I still feel I've, I've mispresented it in a certain way. And I know people have been really good with the yeses and nos and not coming forward unless they can understand it. Okay, I'm going to go for what I originally thought here, but with, with the relationship of mum. I want to talk about mum in the spirit world. And I know that I want to talk to somebody in the UK. And I know that they would have watched the TV series Coronation Street. And I know that either mother or someone met Deirdre Barlow off Coronation nation street um because I, I keep on seeing this and i know there's something here and i'm not going to let go of it i can be a little bit like a dog with a bone but i know here i've got to stay true to what i've been shown and i'm hoping nobody's gone for a cup of tea or a bathroom break oh, doesn't that happen yes it does now we go okay well laura's got her hand up so we'll see what laura has to say laura could you press your unmute button hi laura hi hi sandra hi phil Hello, Laura. What do you understand of what I've said? Right. Sorry, I was on Facebook, so that's why I couldn't um, interact. Um, yes, I have met numerous celebrities, um, both from the UK sitcoms and American sitcoms. And have you met either one of the celebrities from Coronation Street? Yes. That's fine. And was it Deirdre Barlow? No, it wasn't, no. Because mm, that's the that's the woman I said. So let me just work. So you've met oh, with I knew it was about the celebrities. That's fine. And, and mm -hmm. Laura, you have mum in the spirit world. Yes, I do. That's fine. Because I know. And, and what I'd be writing saying, mum loved her TV. She loved it. Yes. And, and, and particularly the sitcoms like Coronation Street. She did. Yes. And what I'd be writing saying, she had a look of one of the actresses. Oh, I'm um, not sure, Phil. No, I not sure. To that. Um, would that would just bear with me. Would I be right in saying she wore glasses? Uh, sometimes. Because I know here, I know there's a similarity in some way. But I want to say, when it came to the programs and TV, your mum never missed them. Yes, that's right. Because again, there's just this impression of really being intrigued with what's going on, and it's almost like real life to her. Yes. <laughs> um, because I, I know I just want to be involved, but it's just something that keeps on coming back. Would it be right in saying that your mum either wanted to go to the set of Coronation Street? Uh, I, we almost went, yes. Because I know here, there's, I, I keep, I've been there several times. I, I know mm -hmm. some of the cast and people behind the scenes. And I know here, I keep on being taken there. And I know it's just mum's way of bringing it forward. But I, yeah. I want to say that your mum never missed, not just the programmes, but missed anything in life. 
yes that's right and yeah. i want to say she i want to say she's like the pillar of the community as well like she seems very popular yes that's right yes and i know she could be full of life in the sense of keeping people upbeat occasionally yes occasionally then if i said that when she met people she could put on hers and graces yes <laughs> because i know here the way she comes to me but i've got to respect how she says it to you and i know it's this impression she keeps on bringing to me but i also believe as well that where mum would have lived at one time was like rows of houses as well um, um i'm not not sure, not 100% sure. About bear that. with me. Then, what do you understand where, where she lived was quite built up? Yes. Because I know it's almost like I keep on seeing the opening scenes to some of the TV sitcoms, and I know mm -hmm. it's about the streets and houses. Um, mm -hmm. But I also believe, Laura, you were brought up with the TV as well. I was, yes. Okay. And it, because I keep on hearing all the children's themes like Rainbow and other things yeah yeah okay. absolutely and and i know here um it's almost like i, I get quite excited because it's my childhood as well where i'm hearing all the tv programs and, and it's almost like i can name them so there must have been either quizzes your mum loved as well yes she did yes uh, and again there must be almost i, I don't want to say public house quizzes but almost trivia quizzes if that makes sense Yes, that's right. Yeah. Because uh, again, it, it feels like the, there's questions been asked, but I'm also listening to music. And I also know your mum used to love the quiz shows off TV. She did, yes. Um, and, and especially one, uh, and what I'd be right in saying, she used to like Des O'Connor. She loved Des O'Connor, yes. Because I know that the quiz show I keep on seeing is the music one, and I know it's Des O'Connor. Uh, mm. And I also know that mum loved that name, that tune, and things like that. Yes, yes, okay. absolutely. Because again, it's just the way that mum comes in. And I know it was all about the celebrities, but I, I just feel that your mum could be quite impressionable by what she saw and who she interacted with. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, because again, I keep on seeing Deidre coming forward and I know mm -hmm. it's all about the impressions here. Um, mm -hmm. But I just feel that mum... Now, I'm just going to go with mum here. Would I be right in saying your mum at times, life wasn't easy for her? Yes, actually. And if I said that this was her escape, would you understand? Absolutely. Because again, it's just about recouping, spending time with self, watching and in her own world to get on and by. Yes. Okay. And that's what I want to give to you is just at this moment, it's all about just regrouping and getting by. And I know that mum's here rooting for you. One last thing. Would I be right in saying on these musical programs, your mum would sing to them as well? Uh, yes, I think she did. Yes. And if I said that you do the same. <laughs> I didn't want to admit that, Bill, but yeah. <laughs> yes, because I know here, um, mum singing along with you, and I know you have that habit, and I know that's why mum's mentioning it, because it really makes you feel good and better, and that's why she's mentioned it here as well. And that's what I want to leave you with, Laura, and say thank you for coming forward and working with me. That's lovely. Thanks ever so much, Bill. You're Thanks, welcome. Sandra. Most welcome. That's fine. OK. Um, all right. I do believe I want to talk uh, about somebody's husband here. And I know that husband would have wor worked on either ranches or a farm. Uh, and I, I just feel that he's like a, 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 a farm, if I'm using the right terms. In fact, no, I want to stick with either a ranch hand as well. So I know I've got husband in the spirit world and I know he would have worked on a ranch or farm, but I know he would have been that. Um, ranch hand or farm hand. I know there's the impression he gives me here. Thank you, Phil. All right, who understands this information? No hands up just yet, Phil. Hmm. That's absolutely fine. Um, I actually feel I want to be in Australia as well, so I know I'm going down in the Southern Hemisphere.
Okay, then if nobody's coming forward, because um, I know there can be a time delay, if nobody's coming forward, I'm going to let go of husband, but I want somebody that either ran or worked on a farm or ran that ranch. It does feel more like a ranch than a farm. All right, who understands this gentleman? No hands up, Phil. Absolutely fine, because I'm not going to change it. There's no. I know there's something here. Um, I need to open my mind just a little bit more to this because I want to check because it's an image that again that keeps on coming back and will not change. Um, I do. I, I'm going to stay stay with the relationship of husband, and I'm going to relook at what I've said. There must be either husband in the spirit world that there must be a memory to. If he's not working on it, I know he would have gone to either some kind of ranch. There's a memory here of almost where I want to be outdoors, that memory of a holiday or working holiday um, on a ranch or a farm not long before he passes. And I know it's something we did that was different. All right, with Katie with her hand up. Bring her in. Katie, could you press your unmute button? Hi, Katie. Hi there. Hello, Katie. What do you understand of what I've said? Um, husband and recently, right before he passed away, being at a farm um, for I'm Thanksgiving. I'm, uh, I'm not in Australia, though. I'm in the States. That you're in the States. I did feel that I was going there. The, the reason I went to Australia, because then bear with me one second. I want to just check on this for a second. With your husband, would you understand where um, he was that outdoors type? Yes, absolutely. And, and, and it's almost like I, I, I want to be free. I want to be out and about. And would I be right in saying that there would have been either memories of just either going out into the wilderness or going out into the country? Yes. Because I know here, and when I say that, I'm not talking on regular walks. It feels like I want to just go out into places that are not well trodden. Yeah, I mean, we, we live kind of in the wilderness, and so that's, that's a big that's part of our Okay, lives. because I wanted to understand where the Australia came in, and the only way I can make sense of it is the outback in the... On, on the, the, the so that's fine. Um, then would you understand where your husband was more comfortable out in the outdoors as well? That's where he seemed to come alive. Yeah, yeah. With your husband as well, would I be right in saying um, that he, he wasn't old, he, he was still young when he passed? Yes. And, and would I be right in saying it was about that way of living that was important for him, for you to have? I don't know. Bear with me. It, it's almost like he wanted to give you that good life. He wanted to bring you the best yes because uh, i know there's this sense of wanting to provide wanting to do but give you a life that was completely different it's almost like i want i want to be be free her on free yeah. her yep okay that's fine um and what i'd be right in saying you have um you've been going through the photographs just recently <laughs> yes and you see it's not just going through them you've been talking to him as when you're looking at the photographs yes and i also know that you've asked to hear his voice you've also asked to let him know that he's around you um and, and i know there must be a photograph of your husband either leaning against a fence or or, or a, a gate or something as well and it's outdoors hmm I don't, I don't know. You'll let me know that I'm right on that because I can see it very clearly. I know it, I can't change that. Um, but if I said, in fact, I'm going to look at it a slightly different way. Would I be right in saying your husband could be quite laid back? Yes. Because I know it's not just about the picture, it's about his personality and he would take things in his stride. Sometimes. <laughs> and, and if I said that he wouldn't let people push him, 
Yes, absolutely. Because each time I push him and ask him for more, he's just doing his own thing and this is just who he is. Um, but I also know that you were his rock and you must have, um, let me just look at it. Would it be right in saying that you cared for him before he passed? No. There's just something I want to look at here. Bear with me. You must have gone to see him just after he passed, please. D yeah, yeah, kind of, and yeah. And would I be right in saying, <sighs> there's just something here I want to make sure I get right. Um, It's almost where I want to say that you, you got to say, and it's about saying goodbyes. Do you understand that? No, he died suddenly. Um, Bear, no, don't tell me anything. Would I be right in saying where you saw him afterwards or sort of, it was about trying to say your goodbyes? I mean, I talked to him a bunch after he passed away. No, no, and it's, it's he straight, said he straight, no, it's straight after uh, Katie, uh, we would have nope. seen him. No, nope, that's fine. Then I'm wrong with that because I, I know I don't want to make it fit or anything, but I know there's something here. Um, no, there's something here. He's absolutely adamant. He will not let me change this. Katie, at the funeral, would it be right in saying where there was either a photograph where the coffin was? No. No. I'm going to have to apologise, Katie, because I can't get to where I need to. Your, your husband is um, trying to convey something through and I can't quite understand it. Um, but I know it, I know it's about not final words, but it, it's still about conversing and letting you know he's still here. If I'm right with this, because I want to have a look at it, there's a photograph that you have displayed of your husband that either follows you around and you still talk to it. Yeah. Because I know here I've got to get this bit right. It's almost like his way of saying, I'm still watching over you. I'm still being around you and I'm doing what I can to give you those signs as well. I know that his love is stronger than words and the way that he wants to convey this is very much still with you as well. But I know the memories of being on the farm and living that life and being outdoors was really important. And it's about making the most of life. Yes. Okay. I'm going to leave his love with you and say thank you for allowing me to do that for you, Katie. Oh, thank you so much, Phil. You're absolutely welcome. Thank you very much, Katie. Thank you. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's been an absolute pleasure to listen to Darren, listen to the wonderful Bobby. And I'm going to confess something about Bobby. Bobby, when you used to come on the screen when in the classes, it was always a nice surprise because it was always wonderful to speak to you because you always had this great big smile. And what you did today was let everybody see that smile and feel your presence. So thank you very much for sharing your address and being with us. I'm going to hand back over to Sandra. Oh, thank you, Phil. And we'll hear right back from you in just a second. Just some announcements. Uh, first of all, just talking about the last um, person that had come through. You know, when we have their picture handy and we relive memories that you shared together, that's a, a gateway for them to come through. It's not like they're not here. It's not like they're not trying, but for us to be in that present moment and to feel those emotions and feel those memories, you know, they work through our imagination and our feelings. It's so easy for our us humans here to want to see bolts of lightning and lights going on and off and all these things happening, but everything is very, very subtle, really is. So Keep talking to them. They are right with you and their love never dies. No way, not at all. 
So some announcements, this is kind of exciting, but you know, we've created this movie about Sonia Rinaldi and her collecting the pictures and the voices from people who are deceased. Well, it has been entered in a film festival. It is a finalist. And in about 20 minutes, it's going to be shown on the big screen in Torino, Italy. There'll be Italian subtitles to it. And then within the next two days or so, we should find out Fingers crossed that it'll win at the film festival. You never know. It's positive intentions. If you're interested in psychic and mediumship and this whole world, we do regular classes. Our classes just started this past week. Of course, you can always join along. But if you want to know how you can get started, you can watch some of the past replays. If you go to wedontdie.com and you click on the store button, of course, that's where you can register for next week's Sunday gathering while you're there. But you can click on um, our weekly classes. And if you want to purchase our January classes, and maybe, you know, you can just start figuring out how our psychic sense works. And then you can also uh, use your psychic sense and learn about mediumship, but it's all explanatory there on the website. But it really is wonderful to watch people in action do medium demonstrations. But what's even better than that is to work and these breakout rooms on Zoom and find out from yourself that you are one heck of a powerful soul. So we invite you to join us for that. Also, our friend Scott Milligan will be traveling, as will Darren, and we won't have a live demonstration with Scott until uh, April 29th. I almost said January there, April 29th. So um, yeah, you'll be missing him, but they are going to have a great trip as well. Next week is Easter Sunday, and we will be together for our Easter Sunday. We know everyone may have plans, but the link that you use to register today also becomes the replay link. And for our students that are involved in our classes, this Saturday, Carrie and Phil are doing a class called the Private Reading Medium, and psychic students are invited in that as well. So a great experience and there's nothing like spending five hours in a class with Carrie and Phil, guaranteed to put a smile on your face. So you can find out about everything and watch the Sonia movie at wedontdie.com and just click on the store button. And um, also while you're there at the top of the screen, it says Facebook group. Come join our Facebook group if you're not part of it already. Introduce yourself. It's a great community that speaks this language, really empowering you through life but also has experienced grief and we believe in the afterlife. Yes, we do. So a thank you to all of our friends who have donated to our Sunday gathering to make it possible. And I will turn it over to Phil. Thank you, Sandra. It's a pleasure to speak yet again. <laughs> but it's wonderful to be part of this, a spring gathering and it, and it feels that way. Kerry said before we started, there's a change um, and it is that spring. But do you know an interesting fact about spring, especially the first day of spring? The sun shines on the northern and the southern hemisphere on that particular day. So you can see we're all blessed with that sunshine and that, that real light and ray of that divine on that particular day. But springtime signifies those lighter days and warmer days for us all. It has a positive effect on us, doesn't it? But it's not just us. As we start to notice those days becoming lighter and warmer, we start to notice nature. We start to notice those flowers coming out. We can start to smell that scent in the air. And it has a wonderful positive effect on us. But we start to really get a spring in our step as well. So it's absolutely a pleasure. So if we can take anything from nature and life, and the animal kingdom, as Bobby said, bears come awake, the butterflies start to fly. Actually, it was the song, wasn't it? But it's absolutely amazing that this time of year, everything does come to life. And it's only a matter of fact that we have that same effect. We come to life. How we change from those winter dark months entering those light has a positive effect. So understanding and knowing how we can respond from these things, then we need to take the most and make the most of this 
energetic positivity frame of mind and start holding those dreams dear and start venturing towards fulfilling them so if we can do that and take those work those thoughts and those interactions and just listen to the birds watch how in animals are interacting and coming together we can learn a lot from it so if we can take those and hold that energy and positivity we can make life a better place but also while we're holding and staying in that positivity, if we can send healing out, as Kerry described, to those people that need it, those places in the world, but our families, our friends, and remind them of that nature, remind them of spring around and see what effect it has on them. Thank you for listening. Thank you for those words, Phil. And it's been a wonderful gathering to be part of and observe and listen and watch. It's been an absolute joy. And thank you for Bobby. You know, it's the first time I've got to see you live and it's been an absolute pleasure to hear you talk and share your words. So thank you for that. And now is the moment to bring our Sunday gathering to a close. So if you'd all like to close your eyes and join me for the closing prayer. We'd like to give our thanks to our friends, brothers and sisters from across the world for coming together here today under the banner of We Don't Die and allowing us all to revel in that joy of uniting the two worlds together again. We'd like to extend our sincere thanks and gratitude to all our friends, helpers and loved ones of that world we call unseen for being here with us today and each and every Sunday and allowing these Sunday gatherings to take place and would like to thank you for giving us the opportunity to work with your world and represent your world. Each and every one of us have done this within our own capabilities and our own abilities. And we hope we've done you proud and represented you in the right way, as each and every one of us find it an absolute joy and privilege to work with your world and for your world. We'd like to thank you for those healing balm, the moments of healing balm, those thoughts and those words of truth that have been shared here today, which has brought each and every one of us those moments of healing, upliftment and joy. As we bring this Sunday gathering to a close, we begin a new week and we begin a new season, whether that be spring or fall. In doing so, we all revel in the joy and happiness that each beautiful season brings within our own unique worlds. As we all continue our journeys of life and tread our own pathways, we continue to learn, we continue to grow and we continue to understand, but we always go forward in our truth that love and life are both eternal. And we know that we can do this in the comfort and knowledge that you continue to walk by our side day in and day out, helping us and guiding us and inspiring us to be the best that we can be. And as we go forward in this week, we ask that a healing balm continues to be shown around the world to help all those that may be in need at this time to bring that mo those moments of comfort, healing, joy and happiness. Until we meet again, friends. Amen. Oh, thank you very much, Darren. And to our crew, Carrie and Phil, the beautiful Bobby. Mwah. Thank you so much. And Bobby picked our songs for today. Isn't that special? And thank you to our friends in the spirit world. And of course, thank you to you at home or wherever you're watching our Sunday gathering. Now, don't leave just yet because, well, Bobby picked this last song, which is Keep Your Head Up. And the words are mighty powerful, but I had to sprinkle a little Sandra in. And I found a little video. You know what it's like when you're just about to fall asleep and your eyes closed, but you come back awake. Well, this is some cute animals doing just that trying to keep their head up. 